When it comes to eating disorders, we sometimes have the tendency to forget that there are other contributors to weight and weight gain other than just diet and exercise, right? There's this whole thing called cortisol that's in our body that is a hormone that is res extremely responsive to stress. And this hormone is a, an extreme contributor to weight gain. Before we begin, my name is Stephanie. I'm Long Island's eating disorder specialist. Thank you for coming to my channel. Welcome or welcome back. I post on this channel three times a week all about eating disorders, body image issues, and general mental health. So if any of that interests you, please click the subscribe button down below. I also have an Instagram and a weekly blog. I will leave those links in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. And as always, if you are interested in this video, if you liked it, if you found it helpful, whatever the case might be, please consider giving it a thumbs up I would really appreciate it I really want to talk about the reason why I believe this video is important I believe it's important to talk about cortisol as a hormone that does contribute to weight not because it's all about weight and weight gain and weight loss however when it comes to eating disorders I do understand that that is a big idea that's in their mind it's we need to challenge it we need to be real we need a reality check what the eating disorder is telling you and oftentimes the eating disorder could just say you need to exercise more you need to eat less and that's what all it takes and that's why you lose weight so it makes you fearful to actually engage in the behaviors that are helpful in recovery which usually is sometimes dialing back on the exercise if that is a big part of your eating disorder sometimes increasing and usually increasing the amount that you eat and what's so fearful about that is because that means that inevitably because those are the contributing factors to weight you will gain weight however that's really just not how that works it is not a perfect correlation like that but also we need to understand there are a lot of other contributing factors to weight the reason why we don't think about it so often in eating disorder recovery is because it doesn't fit the eating disorder narrative the eating disorder narrative controls you by saying that you should eat less exercise more, eat less, exercise more. If that is not a part of the narrative, then we just kind of skip over it and just forget that it exists. So we need to talk about cortisol and how stress actually does contribute to weight. And I'm going to give you 10 tips on how to lower your cortisol levels. First and foremost, let me make a disclaimer. I am not a medical doctor. This is not medical advice. This is what just what I know and what I've done research on and it is important for me to just share it with you. However, if you believe that there's any, you know, weirdness going on with your hormones or anything like that, I would really, really recommend to see a doctor, see your physician and let them talk to you about all of this. This is just a helpful guide. So first and foremost, or second and foremost now, uh, we need to talk about what is cortisol. As I said before, cortisol is a stress hormone. It is extremely responsive to stress. But what roles it plays in our body include not all inclusive, but include regulating blood sugar, regulating blood pressure, controlling how our bodies use carbs, proteins, fats, all of those nutrients too much cortisol in the body, which again is directly correlated to stress. The higher your stress level, the higher your cortisol is kicking out and there obviously then results in higher levels of cortisol in your body. Higher cortisol levels, what it does, it can, it can, it doesn't always, it can lead to fatigue, diabetes, high blood pressure, impaired uh, brain function, as well as weight gain. So just to know that cortisol, high level levels of cortisol is not a good thing. That's really what I'm getting out from there. Let me get into the tips that will help to lower your cortisol levels. So number one is to lower your stress. I know it sounds so simplistic. However, what I'm trying to say by this is to not take on any more than you have to. Uh, stop taking on things just because you feel you have to, especially if it's causing you stress. This means taking stressful people out of your life if you can, taking out stressful situations if you can, eliminate and reduce as much stress as you can. Um, obviously, we are going to experience stress, but most of the time we have way too much that are really just unnecessary. So whatever you can do to eliminate stress or reduce it, do it. And also, it's really interesting when you think about it, is eating disorders and eating disorder recovery is extremely stressful. So 
why I say that is because you might experience weight changes when you are working on your eating disorder or eating disorder recovery. What might happen is that your weight, it might seem like the more you eat, that your weight gains, your weight um, creeps up or anything like that. So therefore, it feeds your eating disorder narrative and is telling you that the more you eat, you gain weight. However, what really may be occurring is that because the stress of it all, the cortisol levels is pumping up in your body and that is contributing to weight changes. So why I bring that up and what is important to take from that is not to be like, well, then I'm not going to engage in recovery. Um, and you know, also just be mindful about the fact that eating disorders itself are stressful, but that's besides, well, that is part of the point. However, what I want you to take from it is that your body is going to take time to regulate. Just understand that your body is going to go through changes while you're in recovery. And it's going to take a while for your body to regulate based on the, what you're eating, your changes in um, your exercise habits or your movement habits, habits, as well as there are going to be different types of recovery that is more stressful, which may be contributing to higher levels of cortisol. And there are going to be times that aren't as stressful and that's going to be reduced cortisol. But overall, when you get to a point of recovery, everything ideally will balance out when you are balancing your behaviors and your lifestyle. Number two is sleep well. What I mean by this is ideally most people should be getting between six to eight hours of sleep a night. A night. Try to get that. Of course, it's going to vary per person. Some people need less, some people need more. Figure out what is best for your body and do it. Number three is also related is to sleep regularly. What I truly believe, and there's you know a lot of people who would suggest the same thing, is that it's more important to have regular sleeping cycles than it is to have you know longer periods of sleep. So if let's and the way this is going to look is that let's say during the week you get like five hours of sleep a night, it's actually not so beneficial for you to then you know really catch up on the weekends and have 10, 15 hours or whatever of sleep a night uh, because that could really throw off your body's natural rhythm. It's actually better for you and better for your sleep hygiene to maintain that the same regularity um, that you are sleeping those five hours a night, even if that's a little less than what you ideally should be getting. Uh, of course, I would encourage you to try to figure out a way if there's a way to increase that amount of sleep time, but more importantly, make sure that you're doing the same thing every single night. And how it's a good idea to go about this, I would encourage you to develop a sleep hygiene routine. Uh, develop a routine that gets you prepared for sleep, gets your body knowing that sleep is around the corner. This way it really helps your body to dial down and realize that you are about to go to sleep and your body just starts to shut down accordingly. Um, I did a whole video on this and I believe a blog. I will leave those links in the description below. I'll put cards in here um, for that video as well if you want to check that out on how to really develop a strong sleep hygiene routine. Number four, relax. I know that sounds like, oh, well, simpler, you know, easier said than done. Um, however, what I would encourage you to start doing is to pick up a relaxing habit. Pick up something that is going to be enjoyable for you, but that brings your anxiety levels down, your stress levels down. Some ideas would be meditation. I'm a firm believer that meditation is super awesome. Even if you don't do it regularly, which I would encourage you to do if you can, but sometimes just when you are having an episode where you're really starting to amp yourself up, Meditation, a guided meditation on YouTube is so helpful. Uh, other things could be taking a bath. You might take um, use essential oils. I love essential oils, especially for anxiety. Um, it really helps to ground me a little bit more. I did another video, and I will leave this in the link below, cards, all that stuff, um, about natural ways to relieve anxiety. Uh, and there's a bunch of really great tips, or at least in my opinion, really great tips to do that. Check out that video if you're interested in that. Number five is take on on a new hobby that has nothing to do with the things that cause you stress. I know for myself this is something that I struggle with because a lot of the things that I do are things that I'm super passionate about which is you know creating these videos to educate more about eating disorders or just self-improvement that I also incorporate into my videos and education and work with my clients and a lot of things that I do or that I enjoy doing are the things that are also work related um, and that could be 
be stressful. I mean, it is stressful regardless. So I know I need to uh, work on, and I have been working on it, by finding other hobbies that aren't to do with the things that, you know, cause me any type of stress. Uh, so that would be, you know, reading a book perhaps that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Like not the improvement books, not the therapy books for myself, of course, but a murder mystery book. That's what I would choose. You know, something like that, something that has absolutely nothing to do with anything productive necessarily. Number six is laugh. And I know that this is in so many videos and it's kind of like a weird thing to say, but laughter has been scientifically shown to really reduce a lot of the negative hormones that are released into our bodies. And it really does something really positive for us. So how you might want to uh, go about it, I'm not saying to just go into the middle of a store while you're alone and break into laughter because that would probably be construed as a bit weird, just saying, I mean, but do you, but perhaps Perhaps finding videos or comedians on like YouTube or Netflix or whatever uh, floats your boat that is just funny to you or if there's a movie that you just break out into laughter with have that as a go-to whatever it takes podcast whatever if you like memes I know a lot of people on my Instagram lately have been responding to the therapy memes that I do um, and it's or that I you know post and you know that makes people laugh so that is something that could be really really helpful just in Incorporate laughter into your day every single day no matter what that is no matter how you get yourself to do that do it number seven is take a break from social media I know FOMO is a real thing but there are a lot of benefits from just removing yourself from social media for a little bit I did a video social media detox I'll leave that again link below number eight okay right okay yeah number eight is movement is to incorporate mindful movement into your life. Oh my goodness, I did a video on like all of these. I'll leave all these links. I'm just gonna stop saying that and I think this is my last video anyway. I'll leave all the links in the description below, but I did a whole video about mindful movement um, and it's really important to incorporate movement into your life. It doesn't have to be in the form of running on the Stairmaster for an hour a day, but just incorporating something is really healthy for your body and for your mind. Um, it could really, really be helpful for uh, stress and cortisol levels as well. So. Find a way to move, find a way that you enjoy, and do it. Number nine is to eliminate or to reduce caffeine. I've said it before and I've, I'll say it again, uh, is that right now at this point in my life, it's legit you know, death before decaf. However, that doesn't mean I could probably improve a bit on the amount of caffeine intake that I am consuming. But, you know, fi figure out what fits into your life, figure out what you're willing to do, but just consider, you know, reducing it a little bit if you can. Um, but especially reducing the things that are totally unnecessary if you are watching this video and in an eating disorder, perhaps that might be diet pills uh, or drinks that might be in, um, sold as to help you, you know, lose weight or whatever it is. So just be mindful about that and I believe that that is something that you could absolutely remove um, from your what you consume in a day number 10 and my final tip is get a pet I know that's just like such a wacky thing that all of a sudden came out of this but pets are so so amazing and therapeutic um, they are really something that can't be mimicked in another type of relationship having a pet is so beneficial in so many ways just being responsible to take care of someone else not everyone is you know a mother or a father and that's you know causes its own stress but having a pet where you could just be able to take care of them but they love you unconditionally it really is just an amazing feeling and can really help to reduce stress levels. I did a video on that as well on all the benefits that a pet can um, have for you therapeutically besides just being adorable. I am going to challenge you guys to try one of these tips for the next week. Pick which one and leave a comment down below which one you are going to try. I want to know also if you are interested in learning more about different hormones as it pertains to eating disorder recovery and all of that. I do think it's important to know the science behind a lot of things to just reality check uh, because a lot of the times the eating disorder can be um, very illogical, irrational, and it's sometimes really helpful to counteract that with science, with facts, with the rational mind. 
explained. Uh, so if you're interested in those videos, please leave those in the comments down below. Leave that in the comments down below so that I know to do more of them. And if you're interested in subscribing, please click my face over here. Here. Uh, and I wish you less stress on your journey to finding your state of balance. I'll see you in my next video.